I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. Make it easier to see the design on the blade, I'm going to put some dicom on it. I'll leave that set there to dry. Set this on the edge of the bench. Set this one on top. The blade spacing isn't exactly the same. The teeth on this blade are slightly longer in pitch than the teeth on George's blade. In other words, his is a finer cut. I'm concerned that if I try and use this as a template, this is going to make this a lot harder to straighten out. So I'm just going to go ahead and file this tooth just the way it is. Just using a round rat tail file. It's got a little coarser teeth than a chainsaw file, but I'm just knocking out some material to make the bottom of the gullet round. Now this is the same kind of tooth as a champion tooth two-man crosscut saw. I'm going to put a glove on that. The file is going to start wearing on my hand pretty quick. I could do this with a Dremel tool, but I have found through experience that a Dremel tool cuts really fast. And the time that it takes me to do this, the Dremel tool will screw it up much quicker. And once you've taken material off the tooth, it's very difficult to put it back on. So a little extra time now will save a whole lot of wondering why I didn't do it later. Now I've sharpened a few of these. And even a sharp one is a pain because it's all muscle power and the handles are a bit awkward to use on a branch larger than three or four inches. People are always trying to cut a 12 inch trunk in half. It's really not designed for that, it's for cutting up branches. And it will cut like a rip saw because it does have the raker teeth, so it will cut like a rip saw, but it doesn't do it well. Now the gullets are nicely rounded, but the teeth are still in pretty sad shape. 
So it's going to take a bit of doing to make these come out right. And right now I'm just shaping the teeth. I'm not trying to sharpen them. I'm just shaping them. So the first step, like always, is to joint the teeth. We want to have all the tips be the same length. A saw that hasn't been jointed will cut, but the high teeth cut and the low teeth are just along for the ride. So they cut slowly. This saw has been sharpened a lot, but not correctly. These pointed teeth are supposed to be taller than these tooth shape. These look like molars. These look like canines. We want to have the molars about 10 or 15 thousandths shorter than the canines. You want to have the canines go through and rip the wood and then the molars come along in afterwards and chisel out what remains. Now this blade also has a tooth broken off back here. We could sharpen this down to the point where that tooth is the same height as all the rest of them. But all you're going to do is, is wear away a whole lot of tooth out here on teeth that aren't really that bad compared to the one that's broken. And you're just going to waste a lot of metal. Now that we have it jointed, this is an ugly extra slim tapered file. That's bull. This isn't an extra slim. An extra slim would be about a third that size. Alloy steel hardened and tempered precision cut toothing durable handle. They call it a Pro Series. Cost all of $1.99 at Harbor Freight. Satisfaction guarantee lifetime. Made in China. KR Tools, Oxnard, California. It's a piece of crap file. Just to give you an idea of the difference, this one calls itself a six inch extra slim tapered file. This is a Stanley six inch extra slim tapered file. Bit of a difference there. But all I'm going to be doing is hogging off some material, so I'm going to go ahead and use it. Now I don't need to have an angle on these teeth. So I'm going to set the blade straight up and down. And I'm going to file these teeth and I'm going to go back and do it again because they're way out of joint. Did you ever hear somebody talking about getting their nose out of joint? Now you know where it came from. Drop this down a little bit, see if I can confine the noise as much as possible. The higher up out of the saw vise, the more it chatters. I'm just filing this until the shiny spot gets off the top of the tooth. I'm just trying to make it so that that tooth comes to a point. I'm setting the file in that V between the two teeth and I'm just making a 60 degree cut. These points right now are, are broad and flat because I went over them with a jointer. So I'm filing on this to make it so that that broad flat spot is turned into a point.
You can call yourself anything you want. Doesn't make it true. The professional series file is shedding teeth like rainwater. Now this right tooth has been broken off. I'm not going to take the left tooth of the set down to match the right tooth. If this saw is ever used, which it may be, you never know, then it will get dull again. And at that point, someone will sharpen it. And this tooth that's just a little bit short will probably be the right length. Now as I'm filing these, if I see that as I'm filing down this point, one side is getting to a point quicker than the other, I will concentrate on the side that's not getting to a point as quick. I'll just put a little more pressure down towards that side and the file will, instead of cutting straight down, it'll cut down this way. You can do the same thing in a direction. Because I want to have both sides even, I want to have them come out to the point at the same time. On this one, this side was a little bit wider than this side. So I took a couple extra hard swipes at the right side. Now I'll just go on down through. And I'll adjust it as I go. Now I don't have to take it down completely on both sides because I am going to sharpen the back side of this tooth. But I want to have them even. I'm taking off a lot of steel with this file, but even so, this file is getting really dull at this point, and I'm not even halfway down. If the saw only needed to be just touched up, I maybe could get two saws out of this file, but I can see that the teeth on the edges are starting to break off. That means they're getting dull and the force I'm putting on it is enough that it's just overloading the tooth and it's breaking off. The file is junk. I'm doing a rough job on this blade. I'm gonna go ahead and take out the steel with this junky file. I might reach into the drawer and pull out another one that's not in very good shape because no point wrecking a good file on this blade. And I just need to get some material roughed off of it. That's another reason that you don't want to just sit here and rub back and forth. You want to take a full stroke over the whole blade because once this wears out up here, you're not going to use up this part. You want to develop the habit of taking full strokes with a file. Use the whole file up. Now I have a file sharpening video about using acid to sharpen a file. A file like this one with the edges broken off, teeth missing, 
it's not going to be worth it. This is junk when I'm done. You have to have something there to sharpen. Once it's broken off, it's gone. This is another tooth that's broken. I'll sharpen it down till this point is gone and I'll leave this one set. Just taking the shiny spot off of that tip. If I file this short one to a point, I've made it so that from, th from here on out, you're gonna have to keep adjusting for that tooth. So it's better just to leave it alone. Almost done. We're correcting years worth of problems on this saw. Can't be done in a second or two. Got one here in the middle. Needs a little bit more dressing. Now this is a safe edge file. No teeth on the edge. So if I run it across something like that, nothing. Might polish it a bit, but it won't take it away. So I'm gonna use that to go along the outside of these rigger teeth. Because it won't make that notched bottom in them. And I'm not laying it in the bottom and rubbing it because that will cut it square. I'm starting out down there and then raising as I go. And I'm filing these straight across. When I come back and file the alternate bevel teeth, I'll be using the alternate bevel like you would on a crosscut saw. Now I'm going to be filing the alternate side of the alternate bevel teeth. I filed all the center going this direction. I'll file the outside going this direction. Start at the bottom, work my way up. Just like the rake.
Now you might think that because this is small, it doesn't take as much work to file a blade this size as it does a bigger one. This little blade has more teeth than this big one. And it takes the same number of strokes per tooth. Now, of course, this one wasn't anywhere near as bad as that one. So it took a lot longer to just shape the tooth into a tooth. But still, two strokes, one, two, one, two, one, two, all the way across the whole thing. Okay, now we have that part done. Now comes the fussy part. On a big two-man saw, a lot of filers take, not a ball peen hammer, it's a square cut special peening hammer, and they peen these raker teeth over. On this little saw like this, I'm not gonna do that. Because it's so easy to just miss and hit one of these other teeth, then you've messed up the saw timing and you've done the whole thing wrong and you got to go back and do it over again. I go across it with a punch. Now I can miss. I can actually hit my knuckles. You know, not that I want to, but I could. And it wouldn't bother the saw blade at all. Make my knuckles hurt. And what I'm doing is curling that tooth over because I want it to hook into the chip and pull the chip out of the kerf. The alternate bevel teeth go along and slice the edges. This goes along and acts as a chisel and cuts out the center. Now you don't want to hit them too hard especially on these old saws, because if you break a tooth off, the only way to get it back is to file all the teeth short. We've already done all that work to try and avoid that. No point making it worse. And I'm not holding it straight up 90, and I'm not holding it at a 45. I want to have it slightly above so that it rests on the point of the tooth because I want to just move the point of the tooth just a little bit. Don't have to do a whole lot, just a little bit. Now that does two things for me. One, it makes that tooth into a hook, which is the point of the whole exercise. I want to have the raker teeth a little bit shorter than the alternate bevel teeth. Because if I leave the raker teeth long, that flat spot on the end there where I'm peening it and putting a little bevel on the end will act like a shoe and just lift the, the blade right out of the cut. So if your rakers are too tall, it really slows down the cut. You'll be whittling away on things forever. You set your rakers too short, then the alternate bevel teeth just keep riding back and forth in the same groove and you don't get the raker down there to cut into it. It's, it's a balance. Depends on what kind of wood you're cutting. On a two-man saw, I go about 10 to 15 thousandths. That's the difference I want between them. On this buck saw, it can be a little less. The teeth aren't quite as strong. and they're not as big. So you have to kind of keep it in proportion. Now I sharpen this blade all the way from one end to the other. This much of the blade is gonna get to see work. 
because everybody's going to take it and they're going to put it into the cut and they're going to come back here and they're going to run the handle bam 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 just as fast as they can up against it and that's going to make it so that the saw cuts but not well now i have to take this rust off of here before i put a set on the blade youtube tells me that 95 percent of you guys visit more than once but now 16.9 percent of you guys are subscribers that are watching the videos that's great let's keep it up any of you new guys go ahead and click the subscribe button don't forget to ring the bell that'll get you notified when the next video is up every day at noon monday through friday and on saturday and sunday they're 9 a.m in the morning because you know we all get up early and don't have anything to do first thing on saturday and sunday if you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. Don't forget to click subscribe. Thanks for watching.